I'm Rick Johansson and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're going to do an Inkscape tutorial. We'll make some 2D flat minimalist landscape art. And here's a couple examples I did earlier. This one is from a couple tutorials ago if you want to check out that video. But today we're going to do this number and I'm going to call it Desert Dunes. If you want to follow along, this is the key areas we're going to focus on. One, how to use the gradient tool so you can make your atmosphere here. Then we'll do an easy glow effect. So you see how the sun has a little bit of a, a glow. We'll do that. Customize the color gradient. This is actually a triple gradient. I'll show you how that works. We'll add manual drop shadow. So there's some depth between the dunes. And finally, to make these dunes, they're very simple. It's just some Bezier pen, which is one of the tools where you can do some simple shapes. We will do that. And then I just pop some color down there just to mix it up. So let's begin. Go ahead and grab the Create Squares and Rectangles tool right here and let's draw out the sky. Now I got the wrong color, so I wanna to go to my Fill and Stroke menu. If you don't have it, it's this paintbrush thing in the corner and I'm gonna click on Fill and I have it on set to Color Wheel, so it's on red. I don't want that. Now I brought in this color palette just to make the tutorial go faster. So if you wanna play along, this, these are the colors we're gonna go with. So I'll do Eyedropper, and that's the top of my sky. If you notice, the perimeter has a black line. That's called the stroke. So while the object's selected, I'll go back to stroke and then I'll X out of that. I don't need any stroke on any of this stuff right now. So I've got my sky right here, but I wanna do a gradient. So if you have, you go back to fill, then you see this one right here, these like rectangles, that is the linear gradient. So click on that and you'll see a bar. There's a square and a circle. The square is gonna be whatever your fill color was, that's the default, and the default on the linear gradient on the circle is gonna be full transparency. So if I click on the circle, see the slider right there? It's very tough to see on the video, but if you if you look closely on your screen, there's a little hash mark that shows how much transparency and opacity there is. So if you want a full block, that's, that's no gradient, and then I add it to transparency. So you can play with that, but then in this case, I wanna go vertical. So I can actually move these different points, these two different nodes, and change the direction of the gradient. So here's diagonal, and then another cheat is if you hold control, it'll lock in a vertical or horizontal. So I'll do control, and there's my, there it is. So it goes from the top to the bottom. But in this case, I don't wanna to go to transparency. So for starters, I will change that to full opacity, and then let's just go to something real light. That's, that's pretty cool there. So this basically is gonna show like the atmosphere, this is the horizon line, but I'm gonna add a third gradient, not a third gradient, a third stop in the gradient. So anywhere in this line, you can double click and create another node. I'll just click right there. And then the same thing. So I just make sure my opacity is full, I'll do eyedropper. And because my sun is gonna be up there, I'm gonna go with this golden. <laughs> All right, so then you can kind of choose. I want it to be, you can go anywhere you want, but I'm gonna go right down here somewhere the sun will be and I'll just click out of this, take a look what I got. Now at this point, the gradient's locked in, you can move it around, and then if you wanna change it again later, let's say you have a different idea planned, anytime you wanna affect a gradient, this pencil thing brings back your bar. So it's, Inkscape's great like that. You can really manipulate it any way you want. Now it's time for the sun. So let's grab the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. If you hold Shift and Control together, it'll make a nice even circle. Let's change the color to white. It's missing for now until I drag it onto our, our sky. That looks good right there. If you're, going, if you're going for very minimalist, you can keep it like that, but I want to show you how to do a glow. So I'm going to click on the sun, and then I'm going to do Control D, which duplicates it, and the duplication one's on top. So up here, this is the steps. This is like the hierarchy. I'm going to drop it down one step, so it looks like nothing happened until I do this. See how you have down here on your fill and stroke menu, this is opacity and then blur. If I blur it, see how it adds a little bit of like a haze. I just think that looks cool. So try it out if you want or skip it. If I zoom back out now, I'm gonna make my horizon line. Let's get my color palette so we can go fast. Horizon line is artistic choice. So I'm gonna make it gray. But remember the last color we did was white. So when I draw it, it's gonna look invisible like that, so let's change it to this gray here. And that is way too thick for a horizon line. Let's just make it super thin. The reason I keep it way off the edge, I like to build my composition all over the place. And at the very end, if you've been watching the tutorials, I just stamp out the rectangle, the actual project at the end. It just helps you when you're grabbing things in hierarchy, you can change things faster. You don't have to do it, but that's the way I do. So there is our horizon line. Let's make it thinner. 
super thin, just like a pop of gray. Let's do the background now. So the foreground is gonna be the dunes, but the background here behind the dunes, which, let's just grab the rectangle again, and it should retain, yeah, it's gonna be the same color as the horizon line, so let's change that first so you can see what's happening. I'll just do dropper, maybe something more neutral, and I need to drop it down one level, but what's happening here? Where did my hierarchy go? If that ever happens, just click back on edit and select objects and you'll get them back, and then let's just drop it down one notch there. All right, before we go on to the foreground and the sand dunes, I wanna add like a little glow. This is just the gradient, but now I wanna add a glow on the horizon line, and there's a couple ways you can do it, but we'll try a simple way. I'll just grab the rectangles again, and this is the wrong color. Let's go full white, and then drop it down the hierarchy, right about there. I'm gonna go right up against it, and this, there's a couple ways you can do it, but this way is super fast on blur. See how there's opacity and then blur? You can blur it out, and then you can choose if you want it to be almost like an overlay gradient, but I wanna be real subtle, so I'm gonna go like a sharp white blur, and then right there, and then, then just put the arrow keys, drop it down. So it's very subtle, but you see how there's like a glow there? I just wanna have more distinction between the, the sky and then our background and the foreground. While we're down here, I'm gonna add a couple lines, like these contour lines, just to show some minimalist version of terrain in the background. I'll just cheat, I'll grab the horizon line, control D, change the color slightly just to show something, control D again. As I look at them, I think the color is too close to the horizon line, and this is why I bleed things off the edge here. If you wanna make a wholesale change, you can then click on one of them and grab the others by holding shift, and you can change the color. We're gonna go brown, should we go blue? I'm gonna deviate from the example. Well, let's add a little pop of color. Let's match the bottom color, add some blue, <laughs> because why not? But by doing that, I think I threw the background color off. Let's go a little bit more gray, something in there. And looking at these, I'm gonna shift and click all three. If you have all different objects selected together, you can move them in tandem. I'm just doing the arrows because I'm gonna have to, I have to make room for my, my two dunes. The background dune will do first. So let's grab the Bezier pen tool. And this is the tool that kind of throws off beginners when you realize it doesn't draw intuitively like a pen or a pencil. It draws through creating nodes. I've got my setting on the regular Bezier pen tool. There's other versions you can use. I made a tutorial on it if you wanna check that out. But to start, just click once and that creates the first node. The red line shows you where's the next node gonna be. I'll click again. But then the third one, I'm gonna click and hold. You can see a little bit of an arch. And then doesn't matter, the rest is all gonna be blocked anyway. The color's wrong, so where's my color palette? Go back to the light one. And <laughs> it's good enough. If you don't like it, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be blocked mostly, but let's say you wanted to modify this. If you have the object selected, go to Edit Paths by Node, and you can move things around. That's the skill we're gonna need for the front sand dune because I wanna show you a simple way to make it. It starts with a trapezoid with a low sloping top. And the most important part is you only need to have two nodes on the left-hand side. So I'll, I'll add a stroke so you can see what's happening. And the bottom, tra this trapezoid is gonna be the dark side of the dune. So we'll change the fill, go to fill, change that to this darker color. I'll do control D to duplicate it. And the top trapezoid now is gonna become where the sun hits, like the lighter color. And then we'll go to edit paths by node. And if you group nodes together, you can move them in union. So I'm doing a group around these two nodes and then I bring it out and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. We're gonna create the way the top of the dune is like wind blown into an S curve. So we'll start by deleting this node and then we can maneuver these handles into <laughs> any way you want. Let's move this over here. That looks good there. Let's get rid of the stroke now. So <laughs> stroke, stroke. I wanna add a gradient to the shaded side here. So I'll click on the shaded side of the dune, make sure I'm on fill and go to gradient. It's on some weird default setting. So I'll go to edit and we'll turn it this direction. So I wanna have the dark side here and I want my light side. That's going to transparency. Remember we talked about that? So we get off transparency. Let's have it go to the other side. So it's still the same sand. Yeah, like something subtle. All right, now let's group the thing so we can move it together. So the whole thing is now control G grouped. Let's see how it looks in place. 
Not bad. I think we need to add either change the color between these two or add the drop shadow. Let's just do the drop shadow trick. So this time I'll just draw a random shape inside of here. And I'm not going to go white this time. I'm going to go dark. Change the opacity. And then we'll drop it down a step. Okay, I think we're ready for that pop of color. I'm going to just cheat again and just duplicate one of these bars I already have. Make it thicker. Where do we want it? I think the question is how much of the ridge we want to expose. I think that'll do it right there. Okay, off camera, I did widen things a little bit because I want to make the ultimate project when I clip it out be like the right proportions. Now let's group everything. So I'm going to grab a no man's land across everything I can get. Control G puts it together. And for the clipping box, I'll just draw something out here. Doesn't matter the color. I do want to make sure it is, there is some transparency to it. This is so I can see what part of my project I'm going to stamp out. To make the clip happen, if you have your clipping box selected, hold shift and then grab everything else. Then go to object, clip, set. <laughs> and, there, and there you have it done there is our inkscape tutorial with the 2d minimalist landscape art where we focused on some gradient some bezier pen shapes hopefully this was helpful to you and have fun with it thanks <laughs>